Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's ranking Star Trek's Mary Sue characters. Now this video is a part of a series of videos where I rank the various Star Trek characters from the various series on a particular category from my least favorite to my favorite. However, this video is going to be a little different. Because usually I pick like the doctors, the chief engineers, the helmsmen, or the captains, or the counselors, what have you. But usually I pick uh, my least favorite to my favorite of uh, that particular position. But in this case, uh, my top pick is actually going to be my least favorite. It's actually going to be what I think is the worst. This is actually a negative ranking, <laughs> which does set it apart. Uh, from the other ones. Also, it's kind of outside of the universe just a tad bit as I talk about contrived writing uh, because here I'm ranking the Mary Sue characters. Now, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the term Mary Sue, especially since it's being thrown around a lot, and I do have to apologize if anyone is offended. Uh, with the connotations um, that come with this term. I just couldn't think of a better term. And I don't, because usually it just refers to female characters. And uh, some people consider the term sexist. However, I am not applying it to just female characters. I'm also applying it very equally to male characters. In fact, the male characters kind of do worse in this countdown, as you'll see. <clears throat> and so I usually think of the term Mary Sue... And, of course, the origins of it was in a fan fiction Star Trek story that was making fun of fan fiction Star Trek stories where the main character, Mary Sue, was perfect and everyone loved her and she was so great and everyone just falling over backwards for her, kind of making fun of fan fiction where a lot of fans put themselves in the story and had them be awesome. Um, but as that applies to modern fiction, is <laughs> tends to be that a Mary Sue is a character that is perfect and does everything right and gets everything right and is usually due to contrived writing that is it doesn't happen in a natural way that seems realistic or conducive to the plot but it's simply because the writers wanted to present this person as awesome and infallible and can do no wrong and so they just contrive situations where they're being perfect and it's usually bad writing and not very realistic um so my favorite examples of Mary Sue's in popular fiction is actually Thanos, which I know a lot of people disagree with me on because a lot of people were like loving Thanos after Infinity War. I personally thought he was a Mary Sue. I thought that uh, he was too invincible, his powers were too strong, and um, it was too, like, they just contrived all this stuff to make it him impossible to beat, and I just did not buy it. Other Mary Sue that I think is uh, that movie uh, No Country for Old Men, the main character, uh, Javier Bardem's character, uh, was also, in my opinion, a Mary Sue because he was invincible and he could do no wrong. Um, <laughs> and from that matter, you could apply it to like action movies of the 80s and 90s or like Steven Seagal, Jean-Claude Van Damme because they go around kicking everyone's ass and nothing bad would happen to them because they're invincible, unstoppable, um, so they could also be considered Mary Sue. <laughs> you notice how all the examples I gave were male. Anyway, uh, um, so let me talk. I'm going to pick who I feel is the Mary Sue character from each of the Star Trek series, and then I'm going to rank them. Uh, from who is the least of a Mary Sue to who is the most of a Mary Sue, who is the worst Mary Sue character of the Star Trek franchise. So, <laughs> let me first uh, explain my list uh, of the Mary Sue characters. Now, from the original series is Spock. From Star Trek Next Generation is Wesley Crusher. From Deep Space Nine is Odo. From Voyager, The Doctor. From Enterprise, T'Pol. From Star Trek Discovery, Michael Burnham. And from uh, Lower Decks, Beckett Mariner. Now, I know a lot of people might be twisting them, getting themselves in the twist and all upset that I chose Spock as the Mary Sue of the original series, but... 
Come <laughs> on! He was pretty contrived to be unstoppable and great and solve every single issue. <laughs> um, like, he always had this Vulcanian or Vulcan weird, like, the, you know, stuff like the mind meld and all that stuff seems commonplace now as canon. Oh, yeah, of course it's part of Vulcans, but you gotta understand in the original series, they just made a made up any power that serviced the plot. Like, ooh, what do we need to solve this plot? Let's just say Vulcans have the ability to go into people's minds. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's say they can um, survive all this uh, toxic viruses that would kill humans. And let's make them way stronger than humans, way smarter than humans, live longer than humans, and able to, and Spock pretty much solves every, every time there's a virus, he's okay. Every time everyone else is incapacitated, he's fine. He's pretty much smart enough to solve every situation. I'm sorry, but he is definitely a Mary Sue. Wesley Crusher, um, there was a opinion I heard once on uh, the YouTubes that Wesley Crusher was not a Mary Sue. And you know what? Everyone is entitled to their opinion to be wrong! <laughs> because of course he's a Mary Sue. Wesley Crusher is a huge Mary Sue because he saved the Enterprise. He solved all the situations dozens of dozens. Almost every time he appeared, he solved the crisis. So yes, he's a Mary Sue. Odo, um, again, he's, you get kind of the Spock thing where he's, you know, the weird alien who's a changeling. He, so he, can't, he never gets viruses or he can survive poisonous situations and he can shape shift to solve whatever situation the plot requires. So he's a bit of a Mary Sue too. The Doctor from Voyager, to be fair to him, was not really a Mary Sue until the later seasons of Voyager, uh, where he just became more and more of a Mary Sue. When you got into season seven, he was a gigantic Mary Sue who was perfect and could solve any situation. Uh, to Paul, again, very similar to Spock. She's kind of based off of Spock, so she has that Vulcanian magic that can solve pretty much every any situation, be resistant to anything. Michael Burnham, a very infamous Mary Sue, which is a lot of people who despise Discovery like to bring up over and over again. And although I don't despise Discovery like them, and I disagree with a lot of what these haters have to say, eh, they do make a little bit of a point that they do make Michael Burnham a little bit too perfect in the show. Becky Mariner is not as people complain less about her, but some people still do complain about her. And in fact, I complain myself. Sometimes they make her a bit too perfect and a bit too experty in solving every, every situation. So, <laughs> those are the Mary Sue's that I am going to be ranking. So, let me now get into it. So let's go ahead and get into my list, and so I'll start with the character that I think is least of a Mary Sue, the bottom of my list, and that's going to be T'Pol from Enterprise. I just had to come up with an Enterprise character, and frankly, Phlox was close, uh, but I think T'Pol... As, as I said, it's kind of similar to Spock and is able to, like, withstand viruses like when they had that, that stupid singularity episode where um, uh, the read alert, <laughs> where they were all getting obsessed with things. She wasn't. She was perfect, and she's the one that had to save the ship and, and snap Captain Ad Archer out of it. And um, uh, when they were in the Expanse and they were trying to take down the Sears, like, she could resist the power of the Sears longer than most people um but she's at the bottom of my list because they actually made her more vulnerable than spock particularly in the storylines like when she got addicted to um this trillium that made her feel emotions that made her feel more real more vulnerable <coughs> and she of course defied um Vulcan uh, doctrine a lot uh, where when she contracted the virus that uh, from the mind meld and the Vulcans tried to exile her or when she refused to give up on Archer and went along with him on the Expanse the Vulcans kicked her out and yet she still endured so it showed her as like a more flawed vulnerable character even though she did have aspects of being a Mary Sue I think uh, overall she wasn't really much of one 
Uh, so next to the bottom of my list is Odo. Uh, again, not much of a Mary Sue. He was shown as very vulnerable, very... Um, he was very stuck in his ways and set in his ways, and he had, uh, once he learned that his people were these uh, intergalactic dictators bent on world, or sorry, intergalactic domination, uh, he, it, it created a really f side, of, really flawed side of him. It was part of him who still wanted to be with his people, yet he really couldn't, um, you know, condone what they were doing, so he was very conflicted. In fact, at one point, he actually turned evil and helped, per, or at least became apathetic to uh, his friend's plight as his people tried to kill and conquer their uh, home. So, um, yeah, so Odo is also a very sort of dynamic character as well, so not. Even though the, there was times where, like, ooh, we can shapeshift and solve this plot of the week. He still wasn't much of a Mary Sue. So next on my list, towards the bottom, which may surprise some people, especially the Discovery haters, is Michael Burnham. I gotta be honest, I don't think that she is much of a Mary Sue. Now, she was at least... You know, she was part... She was enough of a Mary Sue to end up on this list... But, yes, yeah, she started to the bottom because I don't think she's much of one, and here's why. And this is the thing that always got me about the people who are always argued that she was a Mary Sue and um, she, she could do no wrong. The show starts off with her committing treason because she made a mistake that got her entire crew killed. Or not entire crew, but most of her crew got her captain killed, someone she looked up to. And respected, got her killed. It started as war with the Klingons that killed millions, and it's basically her fault for messing up. So it always boggles my mind how people could claim someone that where that's the whole premise of the show that she fucked up so badly that people died, billions, not billions, but many millions of people died. That's the whole premise of the show, and yet they call her Mary Sue. I mean. I get why they call her Mary Sue. As I said, there are other parts of the show where she there's a crisis and she always seems to solve it and she always seems to be awesome and invincible and, and solving all the all the issues. But she's also seen as very vulnerable. Not just in that opening. There's a part in season two where Arian was taken over by control and Arian was going to kill everyone and she could not bring herself to kill Arian even though it's what needed. And Arian herself wanted to be killed because she knew that if not control would kill them all and she didn't want that yet Burnham couldn't bring herself to do it and if it wasn't for uh, the security chief being there um, who actually did kill Arium then everyone would have died because of Burnham and then you get into season three you can say oh she's the Mary Sue because she had a die hard moment but the die hard moment where she was you know loose on loose cannon on the ship that was taken over by those Orion what oh yeah those Orion idiots uh, um she you know you can say oh she's Mary Sue because they have to have her be a die hard but she also was vulnerable shown as vulnerable she had her moment where uh they ended up actually beating her and whatnot she wasn't all that um confident so to me she's a little bit di uh dynamic but here's the argument i would make for those who call her mary sue it's not so much that she's a mary sue it's not that she can do no wrong because as i said she clearly can do wrong and she is shown as having weaker done more less um you know uh more sensitive aspects to her character what the issue is with Discovery is not that she's a Mary Sue. The issue is that the show contrives ways to focus on her, to make her the lead character, to make her the focus no matter what. Like situations like uh, <laughs> that she shouldn't even be involved in. She is because she needs to be because she has to be the main character of the show. And I see that as more of an issue with not trying to say, oh, this, you know, woman of color is perfect because they're SJWs or whatever other bullshit YouTubers put out there, but more to do with um, the fact that the show just doesn't know how to handle not having the captain as the main character so that they um, have to contrive all these ways to make her the main focus, which doesn't actually work, and sometimes it makes her seem like, oh, Mary's, you know, Burnham again has to get him out of the situation, um, 
But again, she's not always invincible. She's not always perfect. It's just they have to make her the main focus every single freaking time. That's the problem with the show. Not a Mary Sue. That's so it's a different issue. Honestly, she's not that much of a Mary Sue. Um, and maybe with season four, that problem will be eased now. She is, in fact, the captain. But, of course, you know. We'll see. I still have my, even though I'm not with the Discovery haters, I still have my issues uh, with Discovery that are huge. Anyway, the next entry on my list is Beckett Mariner, and I do think she is slightly more of a Mary Sue than Burnham, um, even though I do like this character a lot better than Burnham, and overall I like the show letter of Lower Decks better than Discovery. Um... <laughs> Beckett does, Mariner does come off as a Mary Sue. <laughs> a lot. Now, again, she is shown as flawed. Her biggest flaw is apathy. Like, she does, she's, and she's lazy. And doesn't want to put in the effort to become a senior officer. And, like, she blew her chance at promotions uh, many times. So, don't get me wrong, she still has some dynamic to her. But, she, they make her, like, an expert at everything. Like, she's able to kick Boimler's ass, which... Fair enough. Boiler's a bit of a one, but he, he also very easily kicks Rutherford's ass. And Rutherford is this, like, badass cyber, cyborg <laughs> who's shown to have these superior fighting ability, yet she, he's afraid of her. No, that's that's Mary Sue territory right there. And also, yeah, pretty much every situation they're in, she's perfect. She knows the people. Boiler's the idiot. She's the one who's smart and knows exactly how to handle the situation. She's experienced. She knows people. People, everyone loves her. She gets out of pretty much every situation. And now, it does, to be fair to the show, it does show her fuck up from time to time. <laughs> like, she was going on the covers like, uh, with the Orion Pirates, and Tendi was like, act like a pirate. So she just goes, "Arr, matey! <laughs> like, which <laughs> is very idiotic. Uh, so she's not perfect, but sometimes, sometimes... They do make her way too knowledgeable and way too more of an expert fighter and, and way too perfect sometimes. Anyway, uh, we'll get into number three towards the top on my list, and that is Spock. Yes, yeah, some people were appalled I even put him on this list at all, but yes, he's number three. He's more of a Mary Sue than Michael Byrne. I'm sorry, but he is. <laughs> um, and to be to be clear, I'm focusing mainly on Spock's betrayal in the original series. Just to be clear about that, uh, because he that is the one where he was like, oh, "I have this Vulcanian thing that can get us out of this situation." Ooh, I just happen to have these uh, telekinetic powers because that's what's required. And, oh, by the way, they exaggerated his telekinetic powers and telepathic powers in the original series way more so then other series kind of went back on that canon a bit because it got a bit ridiculous. Like, when they are trapped in a jail cell, he was able to do a mind melt through the freaking wall to get the person to open the door to let them out. Like, he's too perfect! <laughs> Every situation, and he always, like, he's stronger, he's faster, he's smarter, he's better, blah, 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 blah. He's too perfect. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to get hate for that, but it's true, so true feelings. Anyway, next entry on my list, number two, second to the top, in a very close second place to me, is the Doctor from Voyager. Now, to be fair, he's mainly this high for season seven. Uh, seasons one through four, I want to say... He wasn't seen as a Mary Sue at all, to be fair. At all. Maybe for a little bit. And then when we start getting into 5, 6, 7, he starts becoming more of a more and more of a Mary Sue until we get to the penultimate episode of the entire show. A little episode called Renaissance Man, where he is the biggest fucking Mary Sue in all of Star Trek. Now, if I was judging him just on this episode alone, he would easily be my number one. And I think that is the worst episode, worst case of a Mary Sue. He's able 
to uh, infiltrate Voyager and pretty much defeat the entire crew. He's able to shoot and outsmart and outwit the security chief Tuvok and make him look like a putz. He's able to take on any form to take take control of any system he's able to captain the freaking voyager ship he's able to be a better captain better strategist he's able to do everything he's way too much of a fucking mary sue and don't get me oh he's an artificial intelligence so he has his advantage bullshit he shouldn't be able to like do all these somersaults and twists and shoot tuvok in the in the fucking leg that is outrageous and it, the only reason that that episode doesn't immediately propel the Doctor into my number one slot is because I am taking into account that for the first four seasons he wasn't the Mary Sue at all, whereas the number one character on my list is pretty much always the Mary Sue. So that is the only reason why he isn't at number one. Just for that episode alone, that one episode alone, and I will stand by, was the biggest Mary Sue moment in the entire show. It was Fucking ridiculous. Anyway. <laughs> Let me now uh, get into my number one, uh, Mary Sue. In fact, sometimes I don't even refer to this trope as a Mary Sue. Because, again, it has connotations which I like to avoid. Sometimes I refer to... You know, invincible, impossible characters that are contrived to do everything right and everyone loves and gets everything correctly. As a Wesley Crusher! <laughs> and that's why, yeah, he's my number one. And that's why that you know anyone who says that he's not a Mary Sue is uh, objectively wrong. He is, in my opinion, the definition of a Mary Sue. So much so, I don't even want to call him a Mary Sue. I'll call him a Wesley Crusher character. Now, I've talked about this a lot on, um, on previous videos of how Wesley constantly has to save the universe. And someone pointed out, well, Wesley never, when did he ever save the universe? To be fair, that is hyperbole. He never necessarily saved the universe, but he saved the Enterprise on countless occasions. And... You know, instead of giving uh, vague um, outlines and terms about how he constantly saved the Enterprise, let me get into some specifics for you, for those doubters out there. So, <laughs> let me start with the Naked Now, where he's drunk, and yet he's able to set up this impenetrable force field that none of the sober senior officers and highly trained engineers can get past and quarters off engineering <laughs> It. And in fact, they use this very same design in order to save the ship. Then there's, of course, where no one has gone before, where uh, his simple presence inspires the traveler to take them all the way out um, to, you know, a couple galaxies away, and then after that to this like weird existence realm, and, and who knows where, where thoughts come to reality. And in fact, the the the, the traveler so obsessed with Wesley that Wesley is the only one who can convince him to do the right thing and who can inspire him not convince him but inspire him enough to get the crew home so again this is Wesley saving the ship and um, Wesley of course spotted that the traveler was the one responsible for it, for it when people thought it was that Krasinski guy who was fucking useless and Wesley's the only one who knew and guess what no one listened to him like oh shut up Wesley not now get away you stupid kid when clearly like, he was the only one, <laughs> only one who fucking noticed that the Traveler was, like, phasing out of existence. <sighs> and then there's Data Lore, <laughs> where we have the character of Lore, who is take who knocked out data is impersonating data and doing a terrible job at it he goes it's magnificent isn't it well, he's clearly lore and wesley is the only one who figures this out and when wesley tries to tell people like shut up wesley and when they're being idiots when it's fucking obvious it's lore yeah wesley is the only one who figures this out so he saves the fucking ship Anyway, and then there's 
peak performance where there's this battle situation where Riker's taking his, you know, has his own crew in a stinky ship that has no uh, chance of defeating the Enterprise in this battle simulation, and Riker chooses Wesley to be on this crew, and the guy's like, oh, what the fuck do you want that little child for? And of course, Wesley, you know, makes all the difference. He has this, and, and, and you know, ingenious and device that he created that is able to outwit and outsmart the you know, and then there's the episode Evolution. Now you can say, well, Mark, Evolution was about Wesley's fuck up because he created these nanites that took over the ship and started wreaking havoc and it could have destroyed the ship and Picard had to make peace with, with the nanites. So isn't that a case of Wesley fucking up? Need I remind you, he created a sentient life form that went off and formed its own civilization. He created an entire civilization, a sentient life form. <laughs> uh, what are these, what, 16? And <laughs> in the episode The High Ground, when uh, Beverly Crusher was taking uh, captive, uh, Wesley was the one, of course, who came up with the solution to get through the their technology in order to save his mother. Of course he is. Uh, the episode of Hollow Pursuits, he's like um, treated as a main staff of engineering. He's in with the main engineering staff and he's like bossing Barkley around. Uh, and the episode um, Menage à Troy, he's off to, he's going to Starfleet Academy but he stops because he's the only one who can figure out Riker's hidden message which is fucking obvious for anyone to see uh, that lets them rescue Riker but no, Wesley's the only one who can figure this out and then there's of course the episode remember me which has the traveler again where wesley is the only one who create can create the static warp bubble in order to save his mother of course he trapped her in the first place but he did that through his you know engineering genius by having the static warp bubble that no one can rightfully do but this boy genius a 16 year old he can do it and then there's the episode final mission where Picard gets injured on this planet where there's this you know fountain that's protected by a force field for no good reason. And um, the adult in the room is this moron. He's like, let's shoot it here. Let's do this. And then Wesley's like, no, don't, don't. Let's calm down. Let's analyze it. And of course, he's like, shut up, you stupid kid. And he gets killed. And Wesley's the one who uses his smarts and genius to defeat this stupid fountain and save Picard. Because only Wesley can do it. And now the adults are too stupid. And then, of course, we get to the last and probably the worst offender on my list. The game where <laughs> Wesley returns uh, and the crew is, um, you know, brainwashed by this game. Uh, this game that Picard and Worf decided to play and that Picard and Worf and other various people, Counselor Troy, they couldn't see that the crew was acting like fucking video, like drug addicts going, ah, have you played this game? It's amazing. Ah. And they're all acting like obvious drug addicts. It's very clear that they're being brainwashed by this game. But no, Picard doesn't figure this out. Jordy doesn't figure this out. Worf doesn't figure this out. Only Wesley Crusher. And it comes to the point where Wesley Crusher and his girlfriend are the only two people on the ship not to be brainwashed. Which is outrageous. And of course, he's the one who retrieves Data, who's able to save the day. So, now there's a few exceptions to Wesley being in Mary Sue, like the Dolphin, um, where he... Um, is acting a bit like an idiot, actually. He's like, oh, you're a shapeshifter. I don't love you. But the the better example would be the first duty, an episode I just reviewed, where he actually was portrayed as a realistic, dynamic teenage boy. Someone you could actually believe who is smart and has skill, but still is flawed and can let himself be convinced by peer pressure. And I've heard an argument saying that that episode proves that Wesley isn't such a terrible character, which I disagree. The way I would phrase that is that episode is an exception. That's what Wesley Crusher should have been like the entire time. 
And if he was, he would have been a char good character. But because they may had one good episode that showed him as an actual realistic person and not a Mary Sue who can save the ship on multiple occasions is the only one that figures out that something's going wrong with all these trained adults, experienced officers who went through Starfleet Academy and many of them have served on various ships in Starfleet and had hands-on experience for years, but no, they're a bunch of idiots. Only Wesley can figure out that the obvious lore is obvious lore. Only Wesley can create an entire civilization of civilized of sentient beings. Only Wesley can create a force field that nobody else can get around. Only Wesley can figure out the very obvious message that Riker is trying to send. Only Wesley can... Uh, Take down this stupid force field that's uh, covering a water fountain, and only Wesley and his girlfriend, in this case, cannot get addicted by a very obvious game and uh, save the crew from themselves. So, Wesley is, in fact, and indeed, the very definition of a Wesley Crusher. <laughs> so that is it for my ranking of Star Trek West, Star Trek's Wesley Crushers. Uh, be <laughs> sure to check out my channel now. I'm almost finished with my ranking. In fact, I've uh, I've done all of my ranking videos so far. So now all that's left for me to do is to get the winners, collect the winners of each of my various ranking videos. And for my dream team, although I think I might leave the Mary Sue out of the dream team because that's more of a negative one. But I don't know, maybe every ship needs the Mary Sue. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, I'll have my dream ship uh, video coming soon with all the winners of my various ranking videos. Until then, you can check out my channel for many more videos on Star Trek. Also cover shows like Lower Decks, The Expanse, Better Call Saul, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all that. And thanks a lot for watching.